Well, here's some news that falls completely on the heading of Bible prophecy. And if you're familiar with the gateway to the tribulation period, it is when the uh, Antichrist and many make a peace agreement with Israel. And that's found in uh, Daniel 9, and you probably can start at verse 25 and go through 27. Now, of course, at the midway point of that agreement, the Antichrist will identify himself by, by breaking away and breaking the agreement, going into the temple and desecrating it, and then declaring himself to be the Messiah. Of course, that will be when the Mark system, the one world religion, and one world economy is established. Now, let me make one thing clear. There's a lot of people who believe that there's some type of deep state that is out there that is heading or is funneling us toward a one world government and a one world religion. And that right now they are uh, working with the religions of the world to establish that when the time comes. Well, the thing is, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the one world religion will be precise and will have a purpose. And the purpose will be that everyone will be required to stop worshiping anyone except for the Antichrist. And when I say the Antichrist, I mean they're going to worship him as a man who claims to be the Messiah. You will be required to take his mark, and all those who do take his mark will worship him and will see him as a Messiah. That's the reason why it says in Second Thessalonians 2, uh, verses 8 through 12, it talks about the great delusion. The reason why they are delu this delusion is so powerful is because God says that they will refuse to believe the truth which will save them, and that is Jesus Christ. And because they refuse to, to uh, believe the truth and be saved during the tribulation period, God will send them a great delusion which will be the Antichrist, and then they will accept their Messiah. So it's very important that you understand the purpose of, of the tribulation period. God is not uh, is not interested in any type of deep state, even though there may be some sort of a deep state going on right now. When the uh, rapture of the church takes place, the deep state will lose its significance and God will begin his uh, quest by unleashing two witnesses and then 144,000 witnesses and then angels will fly through the air and present the gospel. It will be during this time that people will be compelled to be saved. And if they refuse to, in other words, as it says in Second Thessalonians 2, God will then send a strong delusion to them, and they will accept this lie, which is that the Antichrist is the Messiah. But you need to understand that this will be a very different world than what, we, what we're living in now. When the Antichrist comes on the, on the, on the scene, he will be empowered by Satan and his, the demons that, God, that Satan brings with him will also possess those who live on the earth. This will be a very demonic and satanic controlled world. But they won't control everyone. The Bible says that in Matthew 24, 24, that if you have Jesus Christ, that you won't be able to be fooled by the Antichrist. That, in, in essence, is the antidote to being able to resist the Antichrist and his mark, and, and also of worshiping him. Now, of course, we know that uh, the coronavirus vaccines are coming out real soon. In fact, uh, it's being said that here in America that the vaccine will be being distributed sometime either this week or the next week. But anyway, it's within a few weeks. And of course, there's a lot of fear as to the different reasons why this vaccine is coming out. Many believe that it is a prophetic vaccine and it's either the mark of the Antichrist or it is preparing us for when the mark of the Antichrist comes along. In other words, it's conditioning us to take whatever the government says to be true and for us to accept it. Well, again, that's not what the Bible says the mark will do. The Bible is pretty point blank and clear that if you know Jesus Christ, you simply will not take the mark. I don't care if it's in the form of a vaccine or whatever it might be. No Christian will take the mark of the Antichrist that's found uh, specifically in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. But I'm not going to argue whether or not this corona vaccine is the mark or whether it is conditioned or whatever the case may be. If it does not accompany a worshiping a man and taking his mark as a pledge of allegiance to him, and I mean you have to accept him as your Messiah, if it does not have those requirements, it's not the mark of the Antichrist because that's the purpose of the mark of the Antichrist is that you reject Jesus and you accept your Messiah. Everything that's written in the Bible has a purpose, and that goes for the mark of the Antichrist as well. The purpose is that you are freely and willfully 
pledging your allegiance and your worship to your Messiah, the Antichrist. And you know, I'm going to read a passage here from Revelation that shows that those who take the mark know of God and know that God is sending the, these plagues upon the world when the, the uh, tribulation period does start. But yet knowing that, they still curse God and reject him as their Messiah. So don't think for a second that you're going to be tricked into doing anything. Everyone who takes the mark will knowingly take the mark, worship the Antichrist, and they will reject God and curse him to his face. I'm going to take you to Revelation chapter 16, starting in verse 8, and it says, And the fourth angel poured out uh, his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So these people, they knew of God, but yet knowing God, and knowing that he had power over the plagues, they still refused to give him glory. They still refused to worship him, and in fact, instead blasphemed God. Now let's go on, let's talk about verse 10. It says, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues uh, for pain. And verse 11 says, And they blasphemed God, uh, the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And notice uh, verse 10 says that this plague was poured out upon the beast and his kingdom. So these are the people who took his mark, worship the Antichrist, and as you can see, they didn't repent. They willfully blasphemed God and would not repent. And you know, this is something you need to understand about the tribulation period, or really anywhere uh, or any time. It doesn't matter if you are in the deep, deepest, darkest jungles of Africa. If you want to know God, God will send one, someone to tell you how to know him. Nobody is going to hell who has a deep desire to know God. You know, that's never more clear uh, with the uh, story of Cornelius in Acts, where he was seen of a, as a man who wanted to know God, who had a sincere belief in God, but did not know Jesus as Savior. Well, God sent an angel to Peter to tell him to go and see Cornelius and to tell him about Jesus and that his whole household might be saved. If you have that desire to know God, he will send somebody to your house or they will cross your path and they will tell you about Jesus. So nobody who has a sincere desire to know God will ever end up in hell. Now certainly there will be a lot of religious people who will end up in hell. But that's because they had a more sincere desire to serve their religion or their denomination or whatever religious sect they come from than they, than they had the desire to serve God. But let me change courses here and let me get to the article that I actually wanted to present to you. As I said, this article is clearly uh, prophetic because... The Palestinians now, I believe, who will be one day a part of this peace with many, are now saying they're ready to come back to the negotiating table with no preconditions. And let me go ahead and read this short article to you. It says, a top Palestinian official announced on Thursday that the Palestinian Authority is ready to return to the negotiating table with Israel, according to Israeli media. Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki uh, noted that the PA dispatched a message to the incoming Biden administration, of course, the Jerusalem Post, is already switching gears to uh, proclaim that uh, President Trump has lost and the Biden administration is the next U.S. administration come January 20th. But we here in America know that this election is not over by a long shot. And from some of the things that I'm hearing and also uh, sending out through my parlor account, which you need to be on if you want to know what's going on uh, up to the minute, in both Bible prophecy and the U.S. election, then uh, I would encourage you to get on my parlor account. Uh, of course, you got to download their app. But this is a Twitter alternative that I use. And once you uh, do get on, do a search on Parler and start with T, then M, A, L, O, N, E, one zero. And by the time you get to one zero, you should be able to see my name and my Bible prophecy uh, symbol. Then you can click follow and, you, and you'll get everything that I send out throughout the day, every day. And there's been a lot of information on this election that has transpired that I believe is swinging toward President Trump. And I really don't think there's much of a chance that he's actually going to lose this election. Now, of course, many would disagree with me, but I think that uh, he's really heading toward 
revealing the fraud and uh, the other shenanigans that went on. And also, the voter machines themselves, I think, are going to get exposed. But again, that is something that we'll have to wait and see and see what further evidence is brought forth. But you should get on my parlor account because I do spend a little bit of time talking about these types of things. But getting back to this article, it says that Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki uh, noted that the PA dispatched a message to the incoming Biden administration as well as to several European countries. Now that's what's important right there. The Bible says that when this peace uh, process does finally take hold, that uh, the Antichrist will be involved and he will rise up out of the European Union. Now it's very important in Bible prophecy that the European Union be involved either in leading it or in being a part of it because the Bible says that at the midway point of this agreement that the Antichrist would rise up and break the treaty. So here's my point as far as the election is concerned. If in fact that uh, God does allow President Trump to lose this election, as I've said many times, by fraud or by uh, cheating, then I believe it will be for the uh, purpose that the European Union will be able to play a bigger role in putting this peace with many together. And you know, one thing, more thing about this election, don't be surprised if President Trump continues to attack Iran in uh, different covert situations, such as, as you know, Iran's top uh, nuclear scientist was assassinated just a couple days ago, I would suspect that more of these things are going to be happening. And if that's the case, this might inflame um, much of the Middle East as uh, both Iran and their proxies and Israel, of course, are placed on high alert. And I think that would be the spark that might ignite many of these modern Arab world nations to come together with Israel to normalize their relations and uh, get this peace process rolling. So if President Trump does finally end up losing this, I believe that it would be for the purpose of placing the peace process in the hands of the European Union and out of the hands of the United States. Now, of course, I do believe the United States will play a part in it, but I don't necessarily believe they're going to be the lead role if President Trump is defeated in this election. And, you know, of course, there are other things that also need to be accomplished uh, as we go on head, heading toward the tribulation period, and that is the temple must be rebuilt. That still is seen as an impossibility and really isn't even discussed. But at some point soon, I do believe that the very real uh, discussion of the temple and Israel being able to rebuild their temple will have to come to the forefront. And if you think that uh, peace with many, which was seen as almost an impossibility probably not more than a few years ago, is a pipe dream, well, just wait until they start talking about the Temple Mount and rebuilding the temple. That is beyond impossible as far as the Arab world is concerned. But somehow, some way, the Bible says it will happen. So we still need to keep an eye on what's going on, first of all, here in America, to see if President Donald Trump is reelected. And then, if not, then to see exactly where this peace process will turn next. But it is coming, as far as Scripture is concerned. One day there will be a peace with many. And I believe we're right around the corner from it. And if we're right around the corner from the gateway of the tribulation period, then the rapture has to be near. And if you don't know the Lord, you will not go in the rapture. You will be left behind to go through the most horrible time the world has ever known. So thankfully, I have written a tribulation period survival guide that tells you how you could possibly survive this time period. But the most important message it's going to give you is that you can know Jesus as Savior. And even if you don't survive, you can go to heaven. So I would get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide and begin learning what you must do and what will come during this horrible seven-year time period. And if you have a lost friend or loved one that you think are going to, is going to go through this time, horrible time period, go down to the description section and click on the link and get them a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. It's written in two different formats. One is the digital format where you can download it. It's written in nine different languages. And also there's a paid version where it's a paperback where you can physically hand this book to your lost friend or loved one and make sure that they have this information when the time comes. And the important thing this book is going to tell you is that Jesus died for your sins. And he died so that you might have eternal life. So I would encourage you today to accept Jesus as your Savior. Believe that he died for you. Believe that he is the Messiah. Repent of your sins and from this day forward live for him. 
And if you have not subscribed, please do so. Like this video, hit the notification bell, and um, you'll get all the videos that I put out. And of course, if you want plus information that you're not going to get he either on Facebook or uh, in this video, again, sign up for Parlor. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.